श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम हे ओन वे ऑफ धर्म असन स्वाया टूडे आम गोइंग टू थॉक अबाउट द फ्यू थिंग्स फ्यू कॉसेज ऑफ इवल फॉर बाय नंबर दीज आर द प्राइमरी वंस दस डेफिनेटली मोर बट दीज आर द वंस फ्रॉम विच ऑल इवल arises let me fix this quickly now that's our topic for today before we start i'd like to remind each and every one of you if you are new please make sure that you do subscribe make sure that you hit the like button and the notification bell because i definitely know that you will derive benefit from this channel uh, for courses for purchasing of uh, tools magical tools and tools for spiritual growth email me at asanist.fya@gmail.com that's where you will find me so to those of you who are new please make sure that you do subscribe those who are returning viewers subscribe if you haven't and welcome to each and every one of you before we continue let us start by praying to our guru acknowledging the pre- the presence of the ethere- ethereal gurus and those that are behind us on our spiritual path guru brahma guru vishnu guru devo maheshwara guru sakshat param brahma tasmay shri gurave namaha om shri guru bhyo namaha hari hi om now shri mahaganapati गणपतिगुंभवामहे कवि कवीनापमश्रवस्तम ज्येष्ठराज ब्रह्मना ब्रह्मन स्पत आना शृण्वा नूति दसाधन महागणपत नम नवी प्रेय टू श्री दुर्गा द मार गोडेस टू क्लिए एंड क्लीन आवर हाट्स सो दट वी मे नॉट फॉल इन टू दीज थिंग्स that i'm going to talk about sarva mangala mangali shive sarva thasadhiki sharanye trembage gauri narayani namo stute om dum durga yai nama om ayim hrim klim chamunda yai vichi shri durga thank you feeling grateful for how i'm feeling right now i'm feeling positive Anyway, let's continue. The four causes of evil are lobha, which is greed, krodha, which is anger, uh, moha, which is delusion, and kama. Now I'm going to break down these and speak about them in a few minutes, uh, in a short, concise way. So let's start about krodha, which is anger. Anger. There's many causes of anger. but the root cause of anger is fear basically when you are fearful of a certain situation a certain outcome that you don't want to see in your life when you fear for your life that's when you get angry when you are attached it's because of you fear the imperm- the impermanence of that which you are fearing for basically if you fear that they are going to take away your life you fear death basically you are attached to this ego this avatara that you have so you are fearful that one day it's no more going to exist so you fear that someone may might might take away your life not knowing that you are soul so you are fearful of the impermanence of the ego so you fear that you might fear that something is going to happen in your relationship you might fear of a certain occurrence in the future you might fear so essentially that will build up anger and then one thing i've noticed also about anger it's dangerous and it's an ongoing thing you can be angry today and you can be st- and you will chances are you will, you will still be angry even in the following weeks basically so it's a mood it's an ongoing thing and the more you feel anger 
it builds up until it finds an outlet basically some of the outlets of anger would be violence abuse of your spouse or anybody who is close to you um violence is another outlet of anger anger is dangerous guys the root cause of anger at least what i know about anger and how i felt about anger the cause was fear fearing something will cause anger and anger is an ongoing thing i am sorry guys you should be careful of anger so many things that you can do under anger just from feeling angry and anger is also triggered by the things that annoy you basically um if you check deeply into what annoys you most of the things that annoy you annoy you are connected to fear so if you can remove fear you can then tackle anger anger is very dangerous it's very very dangerous i don't know about you but if i'm angry or when i'm angry it takes a lot to calm me down and those that try to calm me down they drive me into a frenzy so i end up doing things that i couldn't do in a normal state of mind so now let's talk about lobha lobha also known as greed greed is very very dangerous and notice all these four causes of evil they are connected to each other each one of them will uh lead you into committing the other so when you are greedy what is greed greed is basically wanting more than what you have basically uh thinking about what i have right now what i've achieved basically um if i want more basically to a certain degree i'm greedy you understand um to a certain degree i'm greedy greed just like anger wants to be channeled it needs to be channeled because it can bewilder and delude you basically so wanting more of something or wanting more than what you have is definitely greed simple basic explanation of it that's greed when you ma- when you want more than what you have that's greed basically in a healthy way there's also greed in a bad way and also anger also has a good way because without anger you can't really fight for your life you can't really fight against adharma which is um evil and corruption so greed also has a healthy side which is that of um attaining to better things all these things are basically shaktis you understand they are energy that needs to be correct to to be to be to be channeled and controlled very well so greed is responsible for capitalism greed is responsible for the first white man coming into africa and thinking of plans of colonizing because from where they come from they come from the ice age there was nothing to eat nothing to wear and basically they had no education and they had nothing better so that created a lack that created a void inside of them so when they felt that void it made them angry so the anger motivated them to go and conquer so greed if uncontrolled can lead you to doing many many bad things you can find yourself colonizing people you can find yourself taking from the poor in order to satisfy your needs or rather to make sure that tomorrow you have something to eat it makes you hard greed makes you hard basically and hoarding comes from the fear of lacking you see now fear is now connected to also greed greed is very dangerous guys and that's what's happening currently in this modern world 
um, you find these internet scams rising. Now, the topic of internet scams, it's very, very personal to me because I have someone that I live with who's actually a victim to those things. And do you know what's the common denominator between the two? They are both greedy, both the scammer and this person that I'm living with. So they have something in common. So it will harm them. On the, on, on the victim side, it's harming the victim that I'm talking about. And then on the other side, the other person is gaining. You understand? So the concept of creating such internet scams and scamming people and taking money from people, people that worked hard for the money, people that worked their entire life suffering for money, and then someone coming to scam it. That's greed, basically. I don't know where they think they will end up with that mentality, but, it, but it's not going to take them anywhere basically so greed is very very dangerous and if you are a victim of such internet scams literally i've seen this person man i'd like to say this person is losing their sanity basically i'd like to say they are losing their sanity i've seen greed turn a person from a thinking individual into something into someone that would do anything for money, basically. If you can, if you have the mentality of saying that you can do anything for money, there's something wrong about you. You are greedy, basically. And if you don't check yourself out, you are going to do bad things to get money. The mentality of doing anything for money, the mentality of being hungry for money, like the motivational speakers would say, Les Brown, um, like um, some of these new age teachers that we have, these spiritual gurus, they, they would tell you that you need to be rich to live in abundance and that the universe can provide uh, more than what you deserve, basically. And you are, to a certain degree, you have a birthright of attaining to, 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 to that level. This person is definitely selling something to you. And by saying all those things, they are trying to make you feel good about yourself. Trying to make you feel like you are attaining something. Trying to encourage you to be greedy. So that they, so that they can exploit your greed, your lobha. So that they can sell something to you at a certain price. And because they said that you need to dream big, they will set a higher price because they are greedy also. So, we'll, so they will take from you and take and take and take. It's very, very dangerous. Now, the thing that bothers me about these spiritual gurus is that when they say such things, it's like they forget that their listeners will want to put that into action, basically. And by putting that into action, they increase their greed and they fall into behaviors which are not uh, conducive for our society. You understand? Greed is dangerous, guys. I know I'm speaking about these things. Some of you might not have a clue about what I'm talking about. But these things are dangerous and we should be mindful of them. They are dangerous. Let's move to, I said it's called Halobha. Let's move into Moha. Now, Moha, it's delusion, basically. It's what's making you think that you deserve all those things that I've just mentioned, those material things. It's what makes you think that you are untouchable. So these spiritual gurus, when they motivate you, or the motivational speakers and the modern, the modern world, Okay, before going into Moham, greed is integral, is an integral part of our society. All our political figures, all our entrepreneurial figures, all our so-called business moguls or celebrities are greedy people, basically. So they are greedy. 
and they keep on enforcing this greed upon us. Now, let me show you an example. There's people like Warren Buffett or Warren Buffet. Warren Buffet is said to be the richest person on earth, basically, or was the richest person on earth. Uh, they take his picture or he says something like, you will never be rich until you find a way of making money while you sleep. Now, Warren Buffet is one of the people who are the elite, the rich people, basically. The elite obtained their wealth from suppressing other people, from capitalizing on the poverty or the ignorance or the hunger or the sickness of other people basically so that's how they are they attain their wealth and they are constantly maintaining it by enslaving people to work for them 24 hours and maintaining their wealth through other ways of gangsterism you find people like bill gates people who made billions from a vaccine basically you understand now, I don't want to talk too much about this because I, I don't know uh, the, the backlash that I might face from the YouTube algorithm. Also, you find people like our president, let's say our president, for instance. Many presidents are rich, basically. They just don't like to disclose their figures, their income streams, and how, how much they worth, basically. So let's take our South African president, for, for example. This person is a billionaire. This person owns a certain number of buffaloes. This person owns shares, owns uh, stakes in certain mines and many other things that I can't even count right now that are generating income for him. There's an incident of the Marikana shooting. The people who know about politics, they will say that he was involved which was a genocide killing. I don't know anything about that. I'm telling you this on hearsay. What I know is that he has buffaloes and he's a rich person. Now, when did he, did he attain those things and how? Do you think he attained those things by hustling just like you? Suppose you wanted to, to, to hustle and make an honest living. Uh, what would you do? To make an honest living out of hustling, you would have to be a gangster. Now I know this because I, I'm also a person who hustles and sells, basically. You encounter all sorts of people. Some people come to borrow money from you and they never return it. Some people come just to insult you. Some people come to intimidate you from stopping what you have to do. So to attain to a level where you own buffaloes, where you own shares, some might say that he, he was from a rich family. To maintain those things, there's a certain level of gangsterism. I have a friend, he has an inheritance of shops. The people of his community are constantly intimidating him and calling Eskom to shut down his power from preventing him from operating his shops, basically. He needs a certain level of gangsterism to, man, to, to, to maintain what he has. So would you want to be like your president, for instance? Because that's what they're telling you. They're telling you to attain to the highest level and you can, you can be rich. The gurus, spiritual gurus, they don't tell you much and they are not honest to you. Most of them, they evade your questions when you speak to them. You understand? They won't tell you straight away. They will try to cut corners, basically. And when they sell you those things, they sell you those things in a way that you, you would think that they are solving all of your problems, only to find that they are exploiting you. They want something from you. That's greed, basically. And then we jump on to Moha. These spiritual gurus tend to, tend to think that they are untouchable because when you attain power, you rise to a certain uh, level of status. 
you start to think that you are untouchable and you do stupid things forgetting that you might fall any day so that moha that delusion goes into your head and makes you behave in a certain way whereby you start disrespecting your followers you start answering people however you want and doing anything you want to them that's where you get cases of rape molestation from the gurus spiritual gurus basically dangerous thing moha which is delusion let's talk about karma now karma i had a personal experience also with karma karma is lust when it's not controlled it's a dangerous thing and another thing about lust um in 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 relation to sexuality basically if you don't con- control it you might even upgrade into other stupid areas of changing your gender basically all because of lust basically uncontrollable lust lust will make you to break up people's homes and families because you are busy with someone's wife in the bible it talks about david bathsheba um david saw a woman taking a bath on top of a roof i don't know what that woman was thinking but i think it was a woman trying to seduce the king so david then went to take this wife and then when the husband came from war david had ordered for the husband to be killed all because they wanted to copulate with the woman of another man all because of lust lust is also connected to greed suppose you have a wife suppose you have a girlfriend now you want another wife you want another girlfriend so you taking more from the other person you breaking people's homes and families to satisfy your lust so you see how interconnected these things are and once they go into your mind they have an ability to make you crazy literally you can go crazy and mad you understand and one thing i've noticed about these things when you get a daily supply or a daily dosage of them you sustain it and once you sustain it when it when you reach a point whereby you can't sustain it any longer it hits you to a point whereby you almost go crazy basically and then going crazy that you're not getting your daily supply of maybe your material things you go angry and when you go you, when you become angry you resort to violence resorting to violence you end up hating people you may, you end up going out there and attaining more de- than you have basically you become more of those characteristics that are the causes of evil so guys we need to be careful about how we conduct ourselves in these areas of life we've been lied to people will tell you to awaken the giant within you this person will tell you that they are making money but at the same time they are selling that book to you people like robert kiyosaki they will tell you that they are rich but they keep on selling books to you you understand are they really making money out of what they say that, that, that they are really making money out of or are they really making money out of the books that they are selling there's courses by robert kiyosaki's group that are um, held almost every month or every weekend at certain convention center here in south africa it's a property investment course it's a 3 day course i think you pay something like a thousand bucks in us dollars basically so that would be around 18000 rands 
But if you sec- if you manage to secure the spot on that day, you pay half, which would be five hundred US dollars, which would be about nine thousand rands basically. Only if you pay that amount on that day, you are able to secure that slot. You go there, you attend the course, you are unable to invest into property. I also had an experience with the forex traders. I was attending a course at GFI Global Forex Institute by Sandy Leches. They also played this game on me. It was on the 5th of December 2015. They said that their course is 16,000 rand. But if I manage to pay at least the deposit and secure the slot of 8,000 rand, I'd be able to, qual- to qualify. I was young, still in high school. I had a little bit of money, took out the 8,000 rand, put it towards them. The following year, I didn't have money. You understand? I didn't have money. So imagine when you can take money from a teenage person like me who was trying out life, putting all my hope into that thing. And then you come to take money from me, capitalizing on my weakness, on my ignorance, on my uh, on my naivete. You see how greed makes one sick, basically. And it's fueled by all those other three causes of evil. You may be greedy because you want to impress women. That's lust. You may be greedy because you are angry that you are lacking inside of you. That's Grodha. You may be greedy because you think you are untouchable, you are untouchable and you deserve more. That's Moha. These things are constantly supporting each other. The cause of them would be what? Ignorance. Ignorance of the true self. That you are the Atman, you are the soul. So you try to hold on physical things and then you end up acting like a mad person. This is a game. This uh, life that we're living, it's a game. You understand? It's not personal. If you can't make money today, try tomorrow or later today. Just don't do it in a way that it harms another human being. You understand? Unfortunately, to a certain degree, that's impossible. Uh, that's impossible. So, well, yeah. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for supporting the way of Dharma 108. Thank you for the comments that you've been sending. Uh, for those of you who want help in courses and learning, uh, I offer courses on either Skype or Zoom. Um, it's a course on mantra activation. Uh, it's a course on spirituality, on how to begin your spiritual path or your spiritual journey. The mindset that you need to pursue this, we do all those on Zoom calling. And if you want um, a course basically on activating a mantra, we also do that on zoom so even if you come from other parts of the world like america i've decided that i'll continue with the course uh, and i'll have to fix something with my banking details so that i can be able to access my paypal but yes it's ready for those of you who want to participate in the course make sure that you do email me at arsonist.fya at gmail.com and if you want to purchase to purchase something from uh the way of dharma 108 if you want to purchase malas which are meditation or chanting beads if you want to purchase um bracelets which are where's my things okay which are bracelets that you wear around here if you want to purchase copper bracelets even better, I have copper bracelets that are inscripted mantras like Om Namah Shivaya. If you want to purchase all those tools, make sure that you hit me up at asnes.fya at gmail.com. 
I don't have a faster delivery service for those of you who are in America. Uh, I think I'll, I'll even use the, the what, what, what do you call it? The mail, basically. I'll use the post office to Korea to send things to you, basically. And they will arrive. They'll take time, but they will arrive. It's better than not being able to buy things, basically, and not having them to arrive, basically. Because I've been trying to find a courier service which would be cheaper, and I can't find it. So the post office would be the best way to, to do it if you really want to purchase something and you're out of the country. For those of you, um, yes, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you have derived benefit from me talking to you about this. I think on the next discussion, I will discuss mind control and how these gurus appeal to you to try and sell you something. It's always the same steps. It's the same steps they use in every religion. I'll also talk, talk about the gatekeepers of knowledge in spirituality and how they, in, they, they use that to, to, to put fear in the minds of people. And what that fear can do to your spiritual practice. I've experienced the fear personally. From like last year up until now, I've experienced the fear. And one thing about these things, because you don't know what are some of the experiences that you might encounter in the spiritual journey. You interpret it, some of it as something. Like suppose you have a warning from a... A prior book reading about spirituality. Suppose I say something to you about the dangers of mantras and that you need to get initiation before partaking into a mantra. Suppose, suppose I say something about that. And then maybe two months later, you experience something that you can explain. After chanting mantras, you'll automatically connect the two scenarios only to find out they are in no way related. But because you are not knowledgeable and you are fearful because of the fear I put in you when I warned you about these things. So you will attribute that fear to, I mean, not that fear, that experience to your practice and it will hinder your practice to a certain degree. You will find yourself in, the, in a spiritual crossroad. And one thing that will numb you more than Everything is your fear. Apart from the spiritual attacks, apart from the people that hate you, that are jealous about you, apart from that, that will be enough to put you in a stupor. Om Namah Shivaya, Asenest Fire. Please make sure that you do subscribe. Please make sure that you do like and hit the share button to share with your loved ones. Shanti.